Buenos dias, drawing one. Welcome back to lesson two of our AMI online learning for drawing one. I hope that everyone is in good spirits and that you all are doing well and are healthy. I know it's really hard at the moment because we have our social distancing guidelines and we must keep to ourselves within our homes for the most part but we will get through this all together. We are all uh, in what seems like the same boat. Um, so with that being said, again, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you guys are all healthy and I hope you guys are not forgetting to wash your hands because that would be gross. So as we are moving on, we are going to continue focusing on a photography series. However, we are going to focus on one point and two point perspective, which was something we had started and visited before our spring break slash school closure. With that being said, you will be following me along with this PowerPoint. So we discuss what it is that I expect from this assignment from you. And I hope you have a great time with it. I'm trying to make art projects to where most to all people can do this with no problem. If you do have a question or a concern, please don't hesitate to email me. I will be with you guys for the rest of the semester and I'll be teaching your lessons. So uh, reach out to me, I'm here to help you out and we are all in this together. With that being said, I'll get started here. We have our one point and two point perspective photo series that we will be starting using the skills that we have obtained by taking photographs from our cameras, filters, considering angles and lightings and all of that fun stuff. But before we do, we're going to review what one point and two point perspective is since it has been a long while that we have talked about this. Doo, 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 doo. One point perspective is a composition, a drawing, a painting, any of that that has one vanishing point. What is a vanishing point, you may ask again? A vanishing point is the portion of the drawing where everything comes together at a point and it seems to disappear, get smaller, uh, things start to get a little blurrier in that instance. Here in this example of Van Gogh's painting of his room, you can see that the vanishing point here is going to be our blue dot here where my cursor is. And if you look, the lines uh, that conjoin to that point, the objects that are closer to me and to the viewer are larger and tend to be closer to the bottom of the painting. Things that are smaller, maybe a little blurrier, such as the paintings in the distance, um, are further away from me. There's less detail in those paintings, so you can't tell what's in them. There's less detail in the smaller things in the distance, making it look like it's further away from me. So that is one point perspective. One point perspective has one vanishing point. Two point perspective, two vanishing points. What? Two vanishing points in this painting, meaning if you look at this one, my cursor is gonna go right over to the red dots. We have one, two vanishing points. The painting shows two-point perspective by showing you this building here. It shows the corner of the building and then in the distance, the uh, two vanishing points, two vanishing points, right? Uh, go into the furthest points, the distance where everything seems to get smaller in size. It gets blurrier. You can't really tell what's back there, uh, but it has two two points of perspective, those two vanishing points. Uh, again, as I mentioned with the first uh, one point perspective, things that are closer to me or to the viewer are larger. They have more detail. 
and they tend to be towards the bottom of the painting slash drawing slash image. Uh, things that are further away from me towards that vanishing point tend to get smaller in size. They get blurrier. You can't really tell what is going on in the distance there other than maybe some silhouettes of people, if that. Uh, but they're... Uh, they are further in the distance because they are smaller and they are also located near those vanishing points which is a little closer up to the top of the painting or in this case would be a little above that center mark of the painting. So that is two point perspective and one point perspective to refresh your memories. The thing that I expect from you uh, from this assignment is that we will be taking a photo series of one point and two point perspective and I will go over that more in depth here for this next slide. Photo series meaning there's going to be more than two images. For our one point perspective, I am looking for three total examples of one point perspective. For two point perspective, I am also looking for three total examples of two point perspective no less. So you should have a total of six images when you go and turn this into the Google Classroom. Try to stick to a theme for each set, meaning for each three photo, photo sets that you take, try to stick to a theme. It can be anything that ranges from building my own nature scape to for me, my two-point perspective is living the life, which is focused on home and playing with toys, and uh, my husband is reading a lot of graphic novels, so uh, I will show you my examples here shortly, but um, they, the themes can be centered around uh, things that you enjoy, such as sports, um, art stuff. Uh, you can center it around nature things, uh, things around your home. I do highly encourage you to take this photo series at your in your living space. So at your home, um, in your apartment, maybe in the yard at most. Remember that we are practicing social distancing and we must uh, stick to those guidelines so we keep ourselves safe and healthy during this time. So again, I highly encourage you to get very creative. You can create your spaces if you want to create a one-point perspective or a two-point perspective, or you can take pictures of something that's already there that is interesting to you, which means our next bullet point here, photograph things that are interesting to you don't just photograph things to get this assignment done. Photograph things that you think are really cool um, or you really enjoy doing this or that or this just looks really cool in the photo. So I'm, I'm going to use this as a one point perspective or two point perspective. Um, either, either way, uh, do have fun with it. You are able to use photo filters like we did with our last project. You can use the social me media apps to filter your photographs or just use whatever you have on your phone's camera options. Um, you can go to pixlr.com if you choose to go the computer route. I'll show you uh, one of my sets is very heavy handed on that. And then my other set is done on my phone. Um, so I'll show you those two examples here shortly. This assignment is due on Google Classroom by Friday, April 17th. Keep that one in mind. I'll have that all written out for you as well on the Google Classroom assignment for you. All right, so materials you're going to need are one, a camera, which can be on your phone. Um, it can be your laptop or it can be an actual camera if you have that capability. Um, you will also need objects and or places. White objects, I'll show you here shortly, um, but definitely keep the guidelines of social distancing. So I highly encourage you to stay in your space, in your living area, whether that, again, be a house, apartment, whatever uh, you reside in, and you can also roam into your yard as well. Uh, and you will also need filters. So um, again, you get to play with that 
uh, sense of filter and create this photo series. So that is all you're going to need basically for this assignment. I try to make it pretty uh, standard and pretty easy for you guys to be able to do. All right, so here is my first example of my one point perspective series. Notice that I have three images in total and they all reside in kind of the same theme where I have a built natural or nature-esque space. Um, this one I titled A Lone Journey, and this one is my one-point perspective. I went ahead and titled mine because I feel like even though the images are very nature-inspired, I thought the theme really tied everything together. So you guys uh, can feel free to title your work as well uh, to tie it into one um, umbrella of a theme, if that's what you wish. I don't require you to title your photo series, but it is a nice way to just kind of, again, tie things together, including the theme and the meaning. So the first image here on the left-hand side of the tree is a very close-up image of a tree. Notice that uh, the closer the uh, trunk of the tree is to me, the lower to the bottom it is, and the larger it seems. The vanishing point in this one, as you see in my courser, is towards the top left-hand side here, because that is where the tree trunk uh, travels dramatically in that direction. Right? No? No? Yeah. And uh, everything gets smaller and it gets blurrier. Uh, for this photo series, I played with Pixlr online. It's a free application that you're more than welcome to use. It's pretty easy and it's fun to explore on that. But I played around with the uh, coloring of the tree as well as the sky and uh, had a little fun with that to make it look a little more dramatically into the space. Um, another one I did is here in the center. These are all done by me. Um, is this picture of a dandelion in the distance in the woods, which is actually a pretty funny picture because it is a tree stump and my daughter and I just stuck a bunch of sticks inside that tree stump because there's soil in there. And uh, we stuck a bunch of random things. And I started playing around with the uh, photography aspect of this and ended up with this image here where the dandelion it's, is by itself in the distance. Um, notice that this area here where my courser is is the vanishing point for my one point perspective there. Um, so that's that picture there is actually created by me and my daughter or my daughter and I. Um, so you can also create your own space if you can't find anything that's one point or two point perspective. Uh, the final one here is another created space for one point perspective. Notice that the vanishing point is here where that little leafy guy is over my under my courser there. This is actually a pile of rocks. Uh, my daughter likes to collect rocks, so I threw some rocks on top of each other and started photographing it and found that this one uh, looked really cool because it looked like a cave and everything that's closer to the bottom is larger and looks closer to me. Therefore, that little cave opening that you see there looks further away because of that little grass or leaf blade that's sticking out. Um, it seems to be further away because it's smaller and in the distance, it's a little blurry. Uh, but uh, again, you can find your space to show one point perspective, or you can also create it, which is what I did with these uh, two right here. This one, most obviously, I did not create the tree, but I did take a dramatic angle shot of the tree trunk to kind of show what I wanted to do there for my alone journey. My next one here is two point perspective. As you notice, again, there is a total of three images for my two point perspective. I titled this one, Living the Dream, being slightly sarcastic in that way. Um, if you notice here on the far left hand side, that is a photo of the outside of our home. 
The closest point to me is the corner of the house and the two vanishing points go off to the side here where everything seems to get smaller. Notice on this side, everything gets smaller with the uh, lining of the house. And then this one isn't as dramatic, but it just kind of jets off the edge of the paper there. I played around my phone 